transformative leaders and trauma survivors. It's Ophelia Lockwood Berry of thehappymedium.com. Today I'm sharing three top benefits of a trauma-informed organization. Keep watching. Welcome back everybody. If you're new here, thank you for joining me today. Before we dive in, I want to remind you that if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you will never miss a video when I upload new content every Wednesday. So all organizations, whether it is a private business or nonprofit, a church or university, are susceptible to the infiltration of toxic policies, procedures, practices, and even ideologies. And one way to guard against this is to become a trauma-informed organization. So what is a trauma-informed organization? Well, I'd like to say that a trauma-informed organization is founded on the ability to recognize the ubiquity of trauma, the widespread impact of trauma, and then understand the potential paths for recovery. And then once they do that, they, uh, they're able to recognize the signs and symptoms of trauma. That is the understanding what trauma is and then the manifestations of trauma when they see them. And then once you understand what trauma is, you're able to integrate what you know about it into your policies, procedures, and practices. And then the final pillar is to seek to actively avoid re-traumatization. So what that means is that you're going to set up a physical as well as a social emotional environment where people not only are safe but they feel safe. So that means that you know you can keep common areas lit, well lit, um, use welcoming language, maintain appropriate boundaries between uh, people who are interacting, keeping uh, conversation and communication honest and open and reflective and even uh, to some extent having uh, an idea of how different cultures view trauma and privacy and safety. Those are the kinds of things that make a organization trauma, trauma informed. So with that foundation established, organizations are able to achieve three primary benefits. And the first benefit is improved engagement among followers. There's one thing that good leaders understand very well and that is that they eat last. To take a page out of this wonderful book by Simon Sinek, Leaders Eat Last. If you haven't read it, guys, leaders, you should, you should read this, a really good book. But they understand that in order for leaders to follow them, to follow their vision, that the number one goal for them is to make sure that their, lead, their, uh, their followers feel safe. And so they do this, they set the example by, as Simon Sinek would say, going into the danger first, jumping into the fire, uh, traversing the unknown. They're not afraid to address the hard issues, uh, to address the elephants in the room. But their key leadership asset is their vision, their ability to understand the link between people feeling safe and organizational success. The second benefit is improved staff and leader wellness. It, it's almost a given, it's almost like we expect leaders to create safe, those who lead our organizations to create safe and supportive and non-hostile work environments. But the truth is that the support staff, their ability to create the welcoming environment is just as crucial. You know, we're talking about the HR uh, personnel the administrative assistant, the security officer, uh, even vendors, people who come onto the premises quite often. And have you ever walked into uh, an establishment, a business, and you felt the culture? It's almost like either you wanna work here or you don't. You know, maybe you see people laughing and having fun with one another. It seems like everybody's just kind of carefree. People seem to be at, you know, at liberty to kind of do their own thing as long as they're getting their, their work done. Or it could be a culture where, you know, you walk into a place and it's just, I mean, even the air is cold. And the people 
you know, don't seem to acknowledge you. They don't even acknowledge each other. <laughs> it's quiet and everybody seems to be really business minded and, and focused on getting things done. And you get the sense that, oh, I don't, I wouldn't want to work here. You can feel it. The culture is created by every person. That's, that's by design. It's, it doesn't just come from anywhere. The, 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 from the top down, the culture is established and people carry it out based on what's been communicated to them either directly or indirectly. And the third and the final benefit is, well, it doesn't have to be the final benefit, but the final benefit for this video is a decrease in the waste of resources. Now, we have all been a part of toxic organizations and businesses. And we know that primarily the number one thing is that toxic organizations and businesses have a reputation for high turnover and low morale. So the, if, if that's the case, there's going to be this increase, not a decrease, but increase in resources being spent on hiring retraining and, and, and rehiring people because they can't sustain a thriving workforce. Now a trauma-informed organization circumvents this, can almost, almost eliminate it. There's always gonna be some little kinks in there, but for the most part, because they follow this process, they work around this by encouraging interactions within the work environment, not just outside, not, not around the water cooler, but as people are working together, encouraging and supporting that collaborative process, incentivizing self-care, encouraging and you know supporting a parallel, reflective parallel process where leaders and followers are interacting with one another without that power differential in between. You, you don't see the classes and, and the cliques and the social uh, compartmentalization of, of, of people. Within this organization, everybody works together almost symbiotically. So now you know the three primary benefits of a trauma-informed approach for successful organizations. And if you are a church or a small group and you'd like to start applying these principles to your to your groups or, or congregation, be sure to download the church trauma healing checklist that can be found in the description below. Well, that will do it for today. Thank you guys for joining me. I always appreciate you tuning in and I appreciate the feedback that you give me that helped me to make these videos more applicable and relevant to situations that you may be encountering in your business, in your church, uh, particularly in your small groups. And if you liked this video, if this video was helpful for you, be sure to show some love by hitting that like button and share it with your friends and comment below. Give me some of your feedback. I love feedback, guys, and you know this by now. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe now, hit that subscribe button, and click that notification bell so you'll never miss a video every time I upload new content on Wednesday. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.